All right, so today we're gonna to talk about this graph and gyro noise. So did some research uh, recently on beta flight and some things that got switched around in the latest release, the 3.2 and above releases. The gyro used to process through the gyroscope data would go down and go through the, uh, you could see the raw gyro data by looking at the debug mode gyro, which we'll talk about in another video and then go through the low-pass filter, then the static notch, and then out to the PID loop. When they introduced the dynamic notch, they changed the filtering sequence, the developers, um, to now use this flow diagram. So essentially, it goes through the notch filters first, then the low-pass filter, then out to the PID loop. So everything in blue here is where you can pick up the data in a debug mode. And if you're not familiar with the debug mode, I'm going to do a series of videos on each of the debug modes, looking at the data and what you can, you know, get out of that, uh, reviewing your black box log to improve your copter's flight performance. So as of right now, the debug mode that is the most untouched by anything is gyro underscore raw. And then it, there's also a notch, which is, you can see it's unfiltered, but scaled. This one's unscaled. Um, so, you know, we'll talk about what scale and unscaled means in this series. Then it goes to the FFT debug mode, and then you can see that in that debug mode, you can see it before and after the new dynamic notch filter, which is a, a good filter. Then static notch filters, if you have those turned on yet, a lot of times people can turn the static notch filters off now that we have the dynamic notch. Then it now goes into the gyro. Uh, you can pull out some data using the debug gyro, then the low pass filter PID loop, and then the D terms pushed out, um, and the D filters there, goes through the low pass zone and so forth, over to the motors. So why does any of this matter? So I'm gonna pull up a black box log here. You know, we're all concerned about flight performance. So what uh, motor noise can do is it can degrade your flight performance because you can't push the D term up as, as high. So in this log, uh, this individual has a lot of gyro noise, and this is with soft mounts. He has soft mounts on this quad, and not this much gyro noise. So you can say this is the debug mode that's notch, and you can see all these vibrations. If I run the spectrograph on that, uh, you can see this huge spike in motor noise. This should not be here, or you want to not, you want to try not to have this. Now, um, you can, you know, look at that after the uh, filtering and the filtering does not knock it down you know it's amazing how well it knocks it down but it's still too much noise there so how do i know that well if we look at what this person has they have a d term um, set pretty low you know 20 25 20 that, that's a pretty low d term um, generally you need a higher d terms to eliminate bounce back well with this uh, with that much motor noise, that D term is going to be overactive, and your motors uh, will really um, have a lot of vibration in them. You can see here now I turned off I hit S for smoothing. Look at all that vibration that's getting through the motors and just making that jiggle up and down. So that's eliminating the possibility of pushing that D term up even farther to optimize flight performance because of all this noise. Um, so just a little bit on you know the discovery of this uh, flow flow chat uh, flow chart and and where that all comes from. Um, I'm going to post the links below, but I want to make it you know available for anybody to to see how that was you know come to fruition and how it was checked. Uh, this is the link where I worked with one of the developers just to understand the change because it really threw me off um, with this switch this year. Uh, you can also then, you know, browse out to the Betaflight project, Betaflight, Betaflight. Go down to the, the folders in the source code, source, main, sensors, and open and just click on the gyro.c. And you can, you know, browse down and look right at the code and see the section that has to deal with um, the filtering. So I'll keep rolling down here. And it's this section right here. So you can see we have the data. Here's the raw filters. 
the gyro roll, then we go into a gyro notch, then you have the um, FFT filters, the dynamic notch is being applied, FFT on the back side, this is channel zero, channel one. So I, you know, I don't know uh, the coding language here, but you can usually pick up enough by seeing the sequence of things. You know, you have the static notches, the low pass filter, so on and so forth. So I'll put that link down. Um, just the realization that, hey, if you have in inquiries about how this stuff's put together, uh, you can go look at the code yourself and, and um, you know, get some answers right from the source. Uh, another spot that uh, this is at now, if you have not looked at this section, if you go to the wiki uh, for that same beta flight, beta flight, just click on wiki and go down to gyros and filters, there's a lot of good information here on recommendations from Boris, the main developer that started beta flight. Uh, now there's a number of developers working on it. On what motor, you know, what settings you should have for your low pass filters and D-term low pass and, and so on and so forth. Um, so there's some base recommendations here. The only issue with the wiki, it's a lot of hodge, uh, a lot of it's old data to some extent, a lot of uh, stuff you'll see out there, it says to run the gyro uh, debug mode to see raw unfiltered data, that's not the case anymore, now it's notch, but um, there's really no, uh, you know, this is kind of all thrown in here from over the years. Uh, case in point is that this this flowchart here is now I throw I threw that into into the mix here as well to kind of clarify it a little bit. So what I want to do over the next um, couple of videos is go through each of these and try to put this bring it all together on how to uh, use the different debug modes and um, look at that and, and filter noise out and understand noise. So one example of that is just you know, running that spectrograph, um, and you can see in the spectrograph the noise amplitude and frequency, most of it's around the 273, the 270s, let's just say. So if I close that off, I mean, you can, you can literally see that in black box. If I zoom in on the data and go from one peak to the next, so I can go here and hit M for marked point and go to the next one, and look at that. Now this one happened to be, I'm a little farther out on that mark point. The closer you are, the higher the frequency, the farther you're away, the lower. So let me just hit M for mark point on this one and do go backwards. 248, so that's that specific amplitude or that specific frequency between the two peaks of this vibration, that's what this spectrograph is running. So you can look at that for when you have high and low throttle events, you know, here's your throttle sticks to see what frequencies are happening at what throttle rates. So it's, it's that kind of stuff that we'll be going through as we're looking at different, uh, different black box logs and different debug filters and, and how you can use that to tune uh, your filters and then ultimately t uh, get a better tune on your quad. Um, just to get an idea of how quick that sampling, you know, go into Betaflight on your quad, go into the sensors tab, pick up your quad, and start moving it around a little bit. And you'll see how these um, gyrograph, or these uh, spectra, uh, not spectra, this is graph updates. Uh, and when you're looking at that refresh rate, keep in mind this is 10 milligrams, uh, uh, 10 milliseconds, and how quickly that updates. Now here it's through the video recording software. It's getting hung up here a little bit because my computer's trying to do a lot of things. but Check out how, um, how much data, so that is a very, you know, if you're looking at your quad and you're thinking, oh geez, that's a, you know, it's very sensitive there. Well, it's nothing compared to what your gyro is actually seeing. If you look at the, the gap of uh, what the measurement here is, this is 0 0.004 milliseconds. So your gyro or your quadcopter is picking up a ton more data than what you're seeing reported in Betaflight when you move things around to, to see what's going on there. And that's all direct to the um, sample rate you're using. And in this specific log, they're using 4K, 4K. So the higher sample rates you use, 8K, 8K, absolutely gets quicker data to the gyro loop. 
for better flight performance, but it picks up a ton more data. Well, that means a ton more vibrations potentially. So that's where soft filtering is coming back in the mix as we go to 32, um, 32 bit or 32 K um, sample rates. It's, it's even worse. So there's a trade off there. And if you're having noise issues, one tip is just try flying your quad at 4K, 4K instead of 8K, 8K or, and see if that helps. So uh, if you're interested in the series coming up, go ahead and subscribe and we'll go through this step by step and we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, I hope this helps. I also wanted to add that if you have black box logs and you're, or you're having issues with your quad, uh, there's a number of locations that you can get people to help you with that. Um, I actually have a beta uh, group on Facebook called Beta Flight Clean Flight Box Box Log Review, and you feel free to join that group and upload your logs to there. Uh, the other resource is on uh, RC Groups, if you're a member there. If not, you sign up, it's worth it. And there's two groups out there, Black Box Log Video Responses and Black Box Log Analysis slash help thread. So post to either one of those. Uh, myself or other people will pick that up, take a look at your logs, and you know we try to do our best to help people out with any situations they're having. So take a look at those resources uh, in the meantime, and, and uh, like I said, hopefully you can pick something up with uh, this journey going through the D-debug modes and some tips on noise filtering, and thanks again. See ya.